Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, we are going to discuss about the molecular orbital theory. And in my previous video, we have discussed about the valence bond theory and its quantum mechanical treatment. The quantum mechanical treatment of this molecular orbital theory will be discussed here in this video by considering the molecular orbital treatment of hydrogen ion molecule which is represented by H2+. In addition to this, we are also going to discuss here the linear combination of atomic orbitals because this term is used frequently in this molecular orbital theory. So before discuss about the molecular orbital theory, I will give you a comparative view about this valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory. So suppose we are having two s orbitals of hydrogen atoms. So one hydrogen atom and second hydrogen atom. You please do not get confused with this downward arrow because this is drawn just because of my convenience. Otherwise, it can be up or down in either way. So just to understand this, you can see this more elaborative view of this hydrogen atom. So suppose this is the nucleus and electron is revolving about the nucleus and this hydrogen atom is represented by HA. So this HA is just a designation just to differentiate between these two hydrogen atoms and this is represented by HB. So B is the designation for this hydrogen atom. When these two hydrogen atoms according to the valence bond theory come close to overlap over each other. So here two different type of forces are playing vital role. So one is attractive forces and the other one is repulsive forces. So here since the nucleus of both the atoms are positively charged so they are when they are coming close to each other so repulsive forces are dominating. Similarly for electrons because these two are again negatively charged same charges are there and when they are coming close to each other repulsive forces are dominating. In addition to the attractive forces of one nucleus and electron there are attractive forces between the inter electron nuclei system. So this blue represents the attractive forces and red represents the repulsive forces. When these two atoms are come closer for effective overlapping or formation of covalent bond they can reach up to certain extent or that distance is known as bond length or equilibrium distance. So here you can see they will follow the Pauli's exclusion principle. So this valence bond theory tells us about in addition to the overlapping of the orbitals about it also tells us about the resonating structures, formal charges over there and more importantly it tells us about the hybridization of the atomic orbitals of same atom. So these are the few important features of this valence bond theory. Now coming to the different approaches for this valence bond theory treatment and the molecular orbital theory treatment. So the valence bond theory suggests that or tells us about that the two atomic orbitals in a diatomic molecules lies close to each other and they are completely filled atomic orbitals remaining intact. So this is important. So completely filled L orbitals will not take part in the bonding. Only the half filled orbitals of one atom overlaps with the half filled orbitals of the same symmetry of the other atom resulting in the formation of covalent. So same symmetry is important. I will explain it in details while we are considering the examples. Whereas in the molecular orbital theory, we are having this different approach and which tells us about that the nuclei of two atoms lie at appropriate distance as I shown you here. So this is the atomic orbital of one hydrogen atom. This is the atomic orbital of second hydrogen atom and all the atomic orbitals of one atom overlap with all the atomic orbitals of the another atom. So here these two atomic orbitals will overlap and they will form molecular orbitals. The overlapping orbitals are of the same symmetry and of almost similar energy to produce the molecular orbital. Right? So here these overlapping orbitals must have same symmetry and almost same energy 
so that they can effectively overlap with each other this and the number of atomic orbitals combined together they will form the same number of molecular orbit out of these molecular orbitals one is bonding and one is anti bonding if we are having more number of molecular orbitals so there are three different categories bonding molecular orbitals non bonding molecular orbitals and anti bonding molecular orbitals here one thing which i bring to your notice is that both the theories have their importance in the bonding and we cannot say valence bond theory is important we cannot say molecular orbital theory is important both the theories are very very important and have their own places in the bonding theory and this molecular orbital theory was put forth by the afon and rs mullikan in 1930 it was further developed by Leonard Jones and Charles Coulson and according to them the atomic orbitals of two atoms come close to each other their atomic orbitals interact leading to the formation of molecular orbitals and the atomic orbitals of the atom in a molecule completely lose their identity after the formation of molecular orbital so this is important now coming to the wave mechanical treatment of molecular orbital theory so according to the wave mechanics the atomic orbitals can be expressed as wave function which represents the amplitude of the electron wave their values can be calculated from the solution of schrodinger wave equation so this wave function can be calculated by solving the schrodinger wave equation in a similar way schrodinger wave equation can be applied to molecules but with slight difficulty so when we are having the molecules more than one electron system then to solve this schrodinger wave equation is very difficult therefore just to cope up with this difficulty an approximate method which is known as linear combination of atomic orbitals is used having this wave mechanical treatment for hydrogen ion molecule instead of two electrons as it should have as hydrogen molecule it is having one electron in hydrogen positively charged ion molecule so suppose these are the two nuclei of the two hydrogen atoms and they are designated as a and b and here is the electron which is somewhere in between these two atomic orbitals and these two nuclei of hydrogen a and b are at equilibrium distance r which is represented by capital r and this electron is at distance r a and r b with the hydrogen ion nuclei a and b respectively this is representation of the schrodinger wave equation for this kind of system so i'll just tell you what does this terms means so here this capital h with this cap is known as an operator and this psi as i told you earlier is a wave function is equal to the e stands for energy and this psi again wave function so as you have seen this psi and this psi both are same and the important feature of this equation is that if this operator operates over this wave function psi and we get again the wave function psi with some coefficient in that case this wave function is termed as eigen function this is the eigen function and the coefficient which is obtained after solving this operator over this wave function then this kind of coefficient is termed as eigen value and if this eigen value is equal to e in that case this operator is termed as hamiltonian operator so this hamiltonian operator is equal to minus h cross square upon 2m del 2 plus v so here this m is the mass h cross means h upon 2 pi and this del 2 means this is equal to del 2 upon del x square plus del 2 upon del y square plus del 2 upon del z square this v is the potential energy of the system which is having the value equal to this q1 q2 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r and the one electron wave functions obtained by solving this equation are called molecular orbital so we are not going to solve this we are going to consider the approximations 
that is linear combination of atomic orbital so this is also abbreviated as lcao so to consider this linear combination of atomic orbitals we are just going to have the wave function psi a and psi b then the overall wave function will be obtained by superposition this superposition means we should have a situation where this electron have equal opportunity to be present in the atomic orbital psi a and psi b and that is known as superposition right so i have discussed it in detail in the valence bond theory as well as in Pauli's exclusion principle video here is the n plus minus this n plus minus means it is a normalization constant if this normalization constant say 1 then this psi or the overall wave function will be like this for this superposition situation psi a plus minus psi b and this situation gives this electron to be present in the atomic orbital a and b with equal opportunity so that is why we use this normalization condition in some of the texts this normalization constant can also be written as c a and c b these are the coefficients of the contribution of psi a and psi b so this can also be written like this and uh, in some of the text you will find this type of notations instead of this n plus so in technical terms in the molecular orbital theory this superposition is termed as linear combination of atomic orbital now coming to the probability term according to the sir max born the probability of electron distribution in molecular orbital is psi square here i have written the modulus of psi square if we do the psi square of this equation here you can see if I square this equation, then what I will get? I will get n square psi a square plus 2 psi a psi b plus psi b square. If you are not a mathematics student, then simple whole square a plus b whole square. This gives us a square plus b square plus 2ab. This is the formula, so you can memorize this. Here, simple we are doing the integral of these terms, right? simply do the integral of these three terms since we know the normalization for psi a square d tau gives us one again this gives us one and this is remains as such right we are not going to solve this and this is equal to one here yeah, you can see that. now after simplifying this you will get this n square one plus one plus two s what this s means so here the s is replaced this integral and this integral is termed as overlap integral psi a psi b minus infinity to infinity d tau is equal to s so this is called overlapping integral and this is very very important now just to have the simplified version of this this is just omitted mathematically but it is ha having very very important role in this linear combination of atomic orbitals that we are going to discuss in the next slide right so the normalization constant have plus minus 1 over root 2 since we are having two values for the normalization constant therefore we are having two values for the psi square that i am going to show you in the next slide so what inference we have made in the linear combination of atomic orbitals for this hydrogen ion molecule the orbital psi a and psi b leads to the formation of two molecular orbitals that is psi plus psi minus psi plus is equal to 1 over root 2 psi a plus psi b and when it is having the negative value we are having this psi minus is equal to 1 over root 2 psi a minus psi b you may have a confusion if this is plus this is minus so we should have overall minus right but not actually the combination suppose c a is equal to plus minus c b and this is having values equal to plus minus 1 over root 2 then in that case we are having two values 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2 comma right and other value is 1 over root 2 comma minus 1 over root 2 so after putting the values of ca and cb we get this type of situation that is why it is important and i will elaborate it in the next video with one example right so in that way we are having mm, this psi plus is okay but this psi minus this is not outside this bracket this is in between these two wave functions right 
So this is how the linear combination provide us two molecular orbitals by the combination of two atomic orbitals psi plus this is the molecular orbital one and psi minus another molecular orbital. The energy of the psi plus or molecular orbital is lower than the energy of the psi minus molecular orbital. So these are the energy values designation of energy values for these two wave functions. Now coming to the next, this energy for E minus for this psi minus is higher in energy and it is designated as anti-bonding molecular orbital whereas this E plus, this E plus designated as bonding molecular orbital and this is represented as a anti-bonding molecular orbital. And here you can see these are the atomic orbital, atomic orbital and it two atomic orbitals combined together to form two molecular orbital. This is the bonding molecular orbital which is the resultant of this psi plus and this is psi minus anti-bonding molecular orbit, right? So this is lower in energy and this is higher in energy and the energy difference for bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecular to the Parental atomic orbital is same. Probability density for finding the electron between the two nuclei psi A and psi B is represented by this psi B square or you can say psi plus square is equal to 1 over 2. What you will get 1 upon 2 psi A square plus psi B square plus 2 psi A psi B within the bracket. With respect to the atomic orbital here this term is additional. Similarly, for this psi anti-bonding, here this A represents the anti-bonding 1 over 2 psi A square minus psi 2 psi A psi B plus psi B square. So, in addition to this, we are having an additional term which is negative. So, what does this mean? This can be explained here. Suppose we are having the wave functions and uh, these two wave functions are in same phase. So, they will give us constructive interference. This plus plus represents the constructive interference. They are in same phase, right? Nothing else. We are having this bonding molecular orbital. So this term is represented as here. So this additional term represents that the probability of finding the electron between the two nuclei is higher in comparison to the atomic orbitals and this is having lesser energy that can be explained by considering that when the electrons are in between the two nuclei the repulsive forces between the two nuclei of same charges is lesser and therefore more attractive forces are there and the energy of the system is less. So energy can be explained and the probability density of the electron can be explained here and this is cylindrical about the internuclear axis. Suppose two nuclei are present over here. This molecular orbital is represented by sigma and this sigma molecular orbital is having cylindrical symmetry about the internuclear axis. Now coming to the next, if these two wave functions psi a and psi b are in opposite phase. If that are in opposite phase, this is designated by this negative charge. Here you can see. And we get this type of situation. And if this type of situation can be further elaborated, so this is destructive interference. And if we combine the picture along with this equation here, you can see. So psi a square and psi b square and this additional term suggests that the probability density of finding the electron in between the two nuclei is decreased by this term and because this decreased and the nuclei are somewhat bared in this situation and they are more repulsive and therefore we are having one nodal plane in between the two nuclei or perpendicular to the internuclear axis. So this is called the new nodal plane or finding of electron in, in between the two nuclei is almost negligible and this kind of molecular orbitals are termed as anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So anti-bonding molecular orbitals are designated with the stars, right? So this is all about the linear combination of atomic orbitals which explain the formation of molecular orbitals. This is the wave mechanical consideration of this molecular orbital theory. If you find this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.